There's one more special case of the chi-square test that I need to show you. So we've done goodness of fit. And we've done the standard chi-square test where you're looking between two different uh, environments. You can have three or four or five. You can have as many different treatments as you want and then as many different outcome categories as you want. So they can be as many rows and columns as you've got set up in your particular experiment. But there is one special case that I need to show you. So this is a study of laterality. The scientists wanted to understand if left handedness is related to uh, having a dominant left eye or right eye. So left and right handedness, does it coincide with having a dominant left and right eye? So I'm a particularly weird person. I have I'm very strongly right handed, but I'm left footed and my dominant eye is my right eye. So this means whenever I kick anything, I usually miss. I'm terrible at football because I haven't got my foot coordinated to my eye. Bit annoying. A bit annoying. Right. Oof. Sorry, I thought the data set was empty then. So I've got left and right, left and right for the eyes and things. If I do view and I view the value labels, you've got left handed, left eyed. You've got left handed, right eyed. You've got right handed, left eyed. And you've got right handed, right eyed. And you've got their totals. So I'll do it again. So we go down to descriptive statistics, cross tabulations. We think that handedness is causing you to have a particular dominant eye. I go to statistics, which on chi squared, press continue and press OK. It's loaded there 400 people in the study. You've got 27 who are left handed and left eyed. You've got 27 that are left handed and right eyed. You've got 110 that are right handed and left eyed and 236 that are right handed and right eyed. The Pearson's test statistic is 6.877. There's a degree of freedom of one and the p-value is 0 0.09, which is less than 0 0.05. So there is a significant relationship between your handedness and your dominant eye. They're not equally uh, likely. Now, when we did the calculation before, which I've closed, you had Pearson's chi-squared, you had likelihood, Fisher's exact and linear by linear association. In this case, there's an extra row that's appeared in the chi-squared tests output, which is called the continuity correction. Now it tells you down here with the little note related to B saying computed only for a two by two table. This is important. Where you have one degree of freedom, the chi-squared statistic is overly optimistic, it is biased. And so they developed a correction to it called the Yates continuity correction, which should be applied for all tables that have two rows and two columns, which is standard in anything which is involved in epidemiology. So in epidemiology, the standard thing will be exposed to some harmful agent, not exposed to some harmful agent, has the disease, does not have the disease. So the standard would be exposed to asbestos, not exposed to asbestos, has cancer, does not have cancer. In that case, what you want is the people who are exposed get the disease, the people who are not exposed don't get the disease. So those two things should be large. And the people who are exposed and don't get the disease should be small. And the people who are not exposed and do get the disease should also be small. Ideally, 
these two things should be zero. That's a standard epidemiological association study where you would also use a continuity correction. So for the continuity correction, the test statistic is 6.092 and the p-value is 0 0.014. It's still less than 0 0.05, so there's still a significant difference, but you should be reporting the Yates continuity corrected version of the chi-squared test and not the chi-squared test itself. As well as being able to do continuity correction for two by two tables, there's another thing that you can do as well, which is called the calculate the relative risk. If I click on statistics and I click on risk and do continue, press OK, it will then calculate an odds ratio for the two different groups. So it says that the odds ratio for having the same I uh, for, actually, what is the odds ratio in this particular case? If you're right-handed and you pick your right eye much more dominantly than if you're left-handed. So that mean, this means you're 2.145 times as likely to have a right uh, to be right eyed to have a right dominant eye if you're right handed than compared to being left handed whereas if you're left handed there's no preference for having either a left or right dominant eye it's easier when you're looking at data to do with smoking so you can figure out that you're three times more likely to get lung cancer if you're a smoker compared to a non-smoker. So for epidemiology, it's a much more obvious thing. 